Welcome back. Thank you for joining me today. So today we're going to begin our second set of Keeping It Simple series. This will be like the first round where we'll have three videos, uh, one a day for the next three days. Okay, so this will be video number one and our second page layout design. So I'm gonna take the same page layout today and uh, the next two days I will bring back the same page design and just twist it, turn it, somehow change it up and make another simple layout. So remember that these layouts are simple. They're meant to, to help us get pages done. They're great for when we're at crops, we're doing some kind of scrapbooking where our attention might be diverted in different areas. So this will help us if we have these simple layouts in mind, then it'll help us get lots of pages done. They're also designed to house a lot of photos. So usually it's a double page spread with probably five to eight photos for the two page spread or more. So let's go ahead and get started and I'll show you what I have in mind for today. I am using paper from the Showtime Designer Paper Pack. So if you have this and you wanna follow along, great, but keep in mind that these layouts can be done with any type of paper. Okay, let me turn this over. So this is probably my favorite page design of all time. I just love it. It's so simple. It's so easy. It doesn't require a lot of paper. And I just, I come back to this one all the time. It's the half and half. So basically I'm going to cut this paper in half and I'm going to use both sides of the paper. So when doing this, I like to make sure that I'm using a paper that I do like both sides of. If you don't like the second side, then we can still work with it. And we'll talk more about that as we go through here. But it, to make this super simple, we want to use one piece of paper that we like both sides of, okay? So let me go ahead and get my 12 inch trimmer and we'll get started. So first thing is we wanna make sure if we do have a directional piece on either side that we are making sure we're cutting it in the right direction. So I do want these, this little design to go up and down. So I wanna cut it horizontally. So I turn the paper this way and I'm just gonna simply make one cut and that's gonna be at the six inch mark. Okay, so this page design is very popular. It's used in a lot of different areas and it's called a lot of different things, but what I like to call it is the half and half. And it's simply, just like it says, you're using, you're cutting the 12 inch piece of paper into two pieces and you're putting half at the top and half at the bottom. This could be done a couple different ways. You can weld it together by putting some washi tape here and then that becomes your piece of paper. I also see where people take a piece of cardstock and line up their paper and then mount this on the back just for stability. Okay, I'm showing you on the front, but of course my papers are exactly the same on the back. Another thing that you can do is you can simply wallpaper it which means you're just going to take a piece of white paper or some kind of paper that you're not gonna see at all. So maybe a piece of paper that you don't really care for or you're not gonna use. You just simply um, adhere it down and cover that whole piece. That would be wallpapering. And if you do end up with any at the edges, you can simply trim that off later. But for today's purposes, I am going to use this white, it's just my backing sheet because I wanna show some other demonstrations with it. This is so useful because we can just put it on, put them on and we just put our pieces down and our page layout is done. Simple as that, okay? I would come in and cover up this seam right here where the two pieces of paper meet. So I could do that with a, another piece of pattern paper, maybe a scrap that I have from the same collection. That one is so sparkly and shiny that added just another bit of texture and dimension to my page just by adding that one strip of paper. Turn it over, you have options if it's double-sided paper. Again, a very pretty layout. You could also bring in washi tape here. And of course, you can bring in border stickers, okay? 
We can punch something out with our border making system. We can use a border punch, anything that we want to bring in a third element super quick just to cover up that divide between the two pages. This one, and right away, we can change up our layouts so quick and so easily by using this page design. But another thing that we can do is we can slide it down. If we want some of our paper behind to show, we can slide it up and that gives us another whole design to work with. Okay, we can turn it to the vertical and again, we can move them however much we want. We can have the whole thing covered. We could bring it in slightly and we can bring it in even more if we want to. Okay, and of course we can rotate it this way and again to the opposite side. Okay, so we're just flipping it around. Gives us lots of, lots of possibilities. Okay, so let's say that you didn't like both sides of the paper. What if I only liked the animal print and I didn't care for this design down here? You can just leave half of it there and you still have half and half design because you have half pattern paper, half cardstock. And again, we would bring in something to divide it. And we can even change the color of cardstock that goes behind it. So now we have a black piece. You see how that changed it. So lots that we can do just by simply cutting it in half and half on one side of the paper, one half on the other, rotating, flipping it around, changing the paper. You can, you can do these layouts all day long and have a different look to your layouts. Okay, so what is it I'm gonna do today? I am gonna do a double page spread. So let's look at the different ways we can do this with a double page spread. Let me bring back in this white piece. So in that case, if you wanted to have an exact mirror image of the top and the bottom on the other side, then you of course would need two pieces of the same paper. Let's go ahead and start with that and we'll have two pieces of the exact same on both sides. Now remember, it doesn't have to be, but if you did want that, you would need two pieces. Okay, so I simply cut it in half again. Let me bring in another piece of white paper here. And we just do the same design principle, running whatever strip we had, we would run it across the full length. So if you're gonna use two strips of it, and this one is about three fourths of an inch to an inch, and that's what I would recommend. Oh, but again, so you would just need two pieces of paper to run across the full length, or two border strips, or two punch outs from 12 inch border. So I, you get the idea. So speaking of the band here in the middle, you can always make that a wider band. It would depend a lot on the photos also that you wanted to use and the look that you're going for. So again, just using a piece of scrap from the collection and just covering up that seam. How else can we change this around? We could flip these two around and have the same paper on both sides, just opposite of each other. Okay. Probably turn that so they're going the same direction. So that's one option. Or we could just do a simple mirror on each side. So if we slide up one and slide down the other, we would do the same thing on the opposite page. Okay, so lots and lots of options. So what am I going to do today? I'm going to keep my papers like this. I'm going to have the animal print on the top and this black other black paper down at the bottom and I am actually just going to weld it together with a piece of washi tape in the back and I'll show you that and I'm going to kind of play it by ear if I need some more stability then I'll have to um, consider that later so I do use the top loading pages for my photo album so if it needed a little more stability by the time I'm done then I would keep the white or black cardstock that came with it, I would keep that in there and give it that little bit extra thickness to give it uh, some stability. But for now, I'm just going to bare my paper and use washi tape. 
And for this, I'm going to bring in my my 12 inch mat so I can make sure it's lined up properly. I do want the cheetah print on the top, so I'm going to flip it over for now, line it up in the corner. I want the black at the bottom, so I'm going to flip that over too. I know it seems like that doesn't make a difference. <laughs> so whatever makes sense to you, then to keep them straight, then just do it your way. But this is um, how I'm going to do it just to get a really good lineup. And then I'm going to take the washi tape. I'm going to actually give it a little bit straighter cut here at the end. And then I'm just going to seal them together. I'm going to give it a little more stability over here at the other side. I don't want to run it over because I don't want to bring that washi tape around to the front side. And there we go. And I'll do the same thing to the other side. Okay, and there we go. Now we're ready to start that half and half layout. Now if you, like I feel like, I'm not sure if it's from the paper cutter or the washi tape coming through. If you have a little bit showing through, that's perfectly okay because we are gonna cover that up right now. So what I decided for my layout is I did wanna pull in some of the border stickers that came with the collection. I think I really like this one down here. It looks like some lights at a theater or a play of some kind. And so I'm just gonna use that. It's very thin. It's probably less than a half an inch. So I'm just going to center it halfway between the seam and then just put it down all the way across the paper. Okay, do the other side. And our page layout is done. Okay, so let's look at my photos. My photos for today's layout are going to be of a casino night. I do have one photo that I can't share, so I'm gonna put that one right like that. And then I'm going to take the other photos. I probably will trim them down and put them I think I'm going to have three at the bottom, one at the top, and then over here I have one vertical photo, so I'm probably going to put it like this and maybe mat that, have the other two photos like that. Okay, so you can see this layout can hold a lot of photos. Today I'm only going to use seven, but it can hold a lot more, and I can keep these actually you know, a little bit bigger if I want to. In fact, maybe I want to do something like this and then just trim them down a little bit and then maybe put that up there so there's options. But I also have my photo mats here. We could also bring in, we could probably fit three down here. And if you really wanted to, you can put two more over here. You could put you know, this would probably be about a four by four up there. And then right here, you could put another four by four if you wanted to. So you can get, let's see, three, five, nine decent sized photos on here. But I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna utilize this spot right here for my title and possibly some journaling. But I do like the idea of moving some of these around and Putting, spreading them out. So I'm gonna do two on each side. I won't make them quite as, as small. I can leave them a little bit bigger. Put my vertical one up here. This is what we were all doing. We were playing roulette. And then this one, I probably will cut down to, to like a four by four. Okay, so let's go ahead and get those pictures trimmed. Bring in my personal trimmer. This picture will be a horizontal, it'll stay exactly like that. And let's see, we don't have to really, we don't have to trim off too much. We have plenty of room 
height wise so I'll keep it like that and then maybe I should make them the same size actually I'll cut this one and then make it same size this way if you wanted it to be really um, symmetrical then you could make the photos on the other page the same the table you cut off this little edge right here so this was a birthday party for a 21 year old someone turning 21 they had a casino night so just not real gambling of course but it was extremely fun okay and on this one okay there we go okay coming along pretty nicely and then we have this one I do want to keep it a uh, six by four and then this one let's see let's see what we have here let's trim down that part I have room I have room for it but I don't need all this green here so I am going to cut that off so this is going to be about a five inch yeah this will be about a five inch photo I do want to keep where it has the odd yeah there we go okay let me put this away and there we have it we have our page layout will be something like this I might scoot these in a little closer and now I just have to decide if I'm going to map them or not okay so I had actually stepped away for a moment to make a decision about whether or not to mat my photos so as you can see I did decide to go ahead and mat um, each of the photos and I put them in black again I'll be saving this one up here for um, a picture of the birthday girl that we were celebrating at this casino night party and so I'm just going to have her the photo here it'll stay as a four by six maybe trim it slightly to fit onto the mat so I did adhere this vertical one first so that I could align everything up properly at the bottom and so I did this one first and then these and then went over here and brought these down as well so now I'm ready to embellish and first thing I want to do is decide on my title and my journaling placement so I do have my embellishment tray here with some of the embellishments that came with the Showtime collection and then I also have my sticker sheets to play with also okay so I did kind of go back and forth about some of the journaling cards in the mat pack and as I mentioned on previous videos I do have the digital art kit from Creative Memories so I was playing around with with different sizes and different mats so I decided on this one I think this one's going to be perfectly for what I want and this one I went into I just printed straight into my word processing which I have a Mac so I use pages and I basically just put the file from my file section in here and it just goes right into the page very nicely and then I printed it out and the square ones print very nicely just print them out on your printer you don't even need your Cricut for this particular step I printed all of these on my printer and not my Cricut and then I just cut them out with my trimmer okay now even this one and then I just fussy cut it out from the paper so that's an option if you don't have a Cricut okay so anyway so I made this one into a four by four because I had a three by four let me show you what I'm so here's my title I'm gonna say casino night and it's gonna go right here right now I just have it on a little bit of wax paper to play with but then I thought oh I need a spot for my journaling so I wanted to put my journaling right here and that's why I went back in and I just printed this out in a four by four and I'll put my casino night title on here and then I just have a little small amount of journaling down here to talk about you know who we're celebrating and why we were celebrating with the casino night and so I thought okay I'll just extend the mat 
and then I'll be able to journal right down there. So everything will be contained in one area. So now for the other, other embellishment areas, I have a lot of room right here and even across here. And then I also have a lot of room right up here. So if I put my circles down for placement, like I do in a lot of my videos, I would put one section here and that maybe I would use larger embellishments there because this is the most area. Then I have some space right here. I could put some more and then I'm thinking that maybe have a cluster right around here and maybe even put squish those together so that the embellishment touches both areas. Let's bring the tray back in as I have some. I did happen to have this roulette wheel in my um, stash, so I thought what better time to use that, right? While well, we're playing roulette at this casino night. So I thought that would be pretty good right up here. And I'll probably mostly have it touching this photo, but then just maybe very little on the other side. I kind of want to stick to the circular shapes. I, I want to kind of extend upward here. So I'm thinking of layering that. And then I kind of like this party time. It's kind of cute there. And I've kind of, so I put all my bigger embellishments on this side and my gems. These are probably things I won't consider on this page. And then I went through and these, the ones here in the middle are the ones I'm considering for this page. Here's my other option I liked was the um, having a blast. So yeah, you know what? I like that one. And probably what I'll do is pop that up on foam tape. Okay. Yeah, there we go. You see how I used bigger sizes over here. So I like that. I like it that the roulette wheel is there. So then over here, actually, I'm liking these stars right here. <laughs> I think that's probably what I'll put here. Uh, maybe put that up on some foam tape also so that when I have my picture, I can just slide my picture right under there. Let me go ahead and do that. Okay, so this will go right on top of there. I like that. Okay, let's see. I feel like, okay, so I do feel like I have gold and black up here. So down over here, I'm going to put this kind of gives me circular and stars, which now I have in each cluster. So I really like that. Let's look at the sticker sheet. Okay, I don't think I need any more words on here. So I'm going to put that one aside, but let's look at the icons. I like the camera. This one is super cute too. Okay, so let's see. The camera, I think I'm going to pop that up onto some foam tape and put that like that. And then I do want something in here. So it's either, I like the champagne bottle or this little martini shaker and the little glass. Let's see. Well, I think I'm going to go with the green because I feel like that bottle kind of ties in with over here because there's a lot of green on that. So yeah, that's what I'm going to do. I feel like this is getting a little bit lost back there. Let's see what else I have that to eat. I think I want something more gold back in the back. See, I'd rather see I have some gold here and I feel like this is getting washed. I love the starburst, but I do feel like it's getting washed away. So what I'm kind of thinking is bringing in the sticker, but covering up what it says. So I have to position these just right to cover up. And I'm not sure if I could do that. How about this one? That gives me a little bit of gold. I like the circle element here, but I just don't think I'll be able to cover that up enough. You know what? Let's try it. We're going to go for it. Okay, so I'm going to put this and then over here in the photo. You'll see I have like this area right here of um, some photo on the on the wall there. So I think that's 
excellent thing to cover up. Get a little bit of adhesive. This one's going to lay flat, so I could just use my regular adhesive. And now it's all about the positioning. How high do I want that up? How far over? Okay, so we're going to do that. And then this one, this camera will come just like that. And then I think what I'll do is bring in I like this little black circle and kind of just tuck that right under there. I like it. Let me turn this a little bit. Okay, let me let me get everything else adhered down and I'll be right back with the my little finishing touches for the end. Okay? Hold on. Okay. So everything is adhered down. I just need to add in a couple more little finishing touches. Those little pieces of bling or sticker or something that kind of is going to highlight and give my clusters uh, some balance. So because I always start with a bigger item at the bottom and then build up and then I like to come back in with the, the smallest of the elements. So I'll do that in one minute, but let's just explain. So here I did put down the title and I put this up on foam square so that I could slide the picture in when I'm ready. And, and then these two I just um, adhered the way they were when we left. So now for my finishing touches, I like to bring back in gems for this. The little stickers that are on the sheet are sometimes very useful. Let's start up here. So up here, I did think I needed to bring in some green. So I have green in my cluster here, and then I have green balancing this out over here because of my photo. So I thought, what do I want to bring in that's green? So I found these in my stash. It's just some little epoxy. One is the a plain card and one is a poker chip. And I liked the green poker chip. So I think what I'm going to do is tuck that right in here. That kind of adds to my cluster and kind of ties the photo in. And I did take off the adhesive on that one corner so I could still slide my photo in. Okay, so that's going to look like that. Okay, so what else? Do I need to add? So I think that cluster is done because my journaling is going to go right here as well. So I don't want to overdo that cluster. So down here, let's see, I could put in some gems. Yeah, that would look nice. Let's try that. I like the gem because it, it kind of ties in with the strip that we put at the very beginning. One on the back here. <laughs> I could bring that in maybe closer. Yep, I like it. Okay, so that's what I'm talking about with finishing touches. Now up here, I did like these star, these little twinkly looking star bits, but I'm not sure where I can put those. So up here, I'm wondering if I should maybe bring in that, that green again, just like I did in the other cluster. Well, let's see if we like that. Maybe a small one, kind of like what I did here, going up, just adds a little bit of sparkle and brings in the right color palette. Let's see. Yeah, I like that there. So let me go ahead and push those down. Okay, so do I want these little twinklers? I'm not sure. I think I'm wrapping it up here, but oh, you know what? That looks cute. I think I'll add that right there. <laughs> okay, so if, if if this has inspired you at all to create a simple layout, I would really appreciate it if you took a moment to click that like button and that helps just to spread my content further. And I do appreciate that and thank you for that. So let's recap. This layout we I'm calling the half and half because I took half a piece of paper on the top, flipped it over, put the other half here on the bottom, and simply put um, a border sticker to cover up the seam. Very basic, very simple page design. And then we put in the photos. I happen to mat them. You don't need to. Uh, not matting would save you time, but I felt like my photos on this paper blended in too much. Then I did some very simple embellishment clusters. Tried to focus on embellishments that were in my collection already. Okay, with and I only brought in a few items from my stash. Okay, so I hope you liked this first video in our second round of keeping it simple and come back tomorrow and I will have video number two ready and let's see how we can change up this half and half layout and make it a little bit different so that we can get our pages conquered. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed this first video in our second round of keeping it simple and I'll see you 
back tomorrow. Okay, thank you. Bye-bye.